right? Clap your hands one more time. You may return to your seats. Have you two been served? Have you two been served communion? Come to my right again just in case and y'all serve them. Elder Charles Carey, approach the altar. Don Nitra Eddings, approach the altar. Y'all clap for both of these as they come. I don't do things by the script because I am truly prophetic and I walk in that. I've watched Elder Curry for a long time, long time, still watching. I believe in him, church, say amen. amen. Dedicated man, hardworking. Nobody knows you, that's why they ain't saying amen. Loves his son to life. Passion for music, but we heard him minister about a year and a half ago. And he talked about the fruits of the spirit. He didn't try to be anyone else but himself. Some of these folk that grab the mic, that's the only time they have a time to shine. But he's a servant. When I license and ordain anyone, I don't expect for them to be perfect. I'm not perfect. I'm a bad mother, shut your mouth. But I'm not perfect. And I think that the membership knows what our saying is, we are not perfect. Help me finish it, but every day. I said every day. What do we do? We strive to be better. When you and this precious dear heart and Denitra, you came from a friend of mine of 40 years. This church had no idea. Sometimes they think you just come in and get in, but they have no idea. Your pastor, the doctor, Bishop Superintendent Larry Miles, is my friend and brother. Y'all clap for him. He's my friend and brother. We were in the same jurisdiction for 11 years. Me, him, and Melvin Rouse, rest in peace, traveled with Bishop Green. We also did work with Bishop Willis. We also did work with Jack Johnson. We did so much work with Bishop James Moore from the Tower of Deliverance Highway and Hedges District. I was the executive pastor of the Tower of Deliverance Church of God in Christ. I remember you, but I exited years later to see you come here and did not know you were a preacher. You came here under the guise of dating a singer of this church. That man, I don't care who don't like it, that man is gone. You have remained. What the devil meant for your evil. Maybe his real job was to get you to your prepared place. Back to you, Carrie. Then one more time with you. If I ever saw a man that I know his greatest pain is his love for his family. Wishing that he could be God for them. That will really never happen. But if God be for you. I wish I had a church. Ooh. You in Lasante. Are greatly appreciated here. I've known your pastor for 33 years. Look 
Okay, I've known him, <laughs> the Bishop Edgar Van, for 33 years. I preached for him, one of the largest ministries in Detroit. I've heard your project. Y'all don't know he's got a full project on Apple. He's a bad guy. His son had to get it from somewhere. I know the mama going to say he got it from me too, but I'm not ordaining you today, wherever you are. But Curry, we give you honor. And then the Bible says to both of you, let an elder that rules well. This is where it begins. You must rule well. You can't respond like average members. You can't make excuses like average people. You can't allow average to be a part of your personality. He that ruleth well is to be given double honor. You are now in another level of headship that gives you authority now to perform weddings, to do things, to get into hospitals at any time, to visit whoever, to go into the prison systems and touch certain people that average people can't touch. You can even have a lot of power in politics and in the courtroom if you conduct yourself in such a way that the judge recognizes who you are in the Christian community. Remember, you carry my name. My name is on these. As the governor's name is on certain papers in the state of Florida. Wherever you are a part of, there should be a name above you that solidifies that. If either one of you should ever get in a fix and in betwixt and something negative happens because of your humanity, I've got your back. We ride together. I'm sorry, this is supposed to be an ordination, eh? We die together. I don't cut people off because they make mistakes. I come from a great family who's watching now, my brother Aaron's watching, he said, do good today. I never knew he watched us, watch us all the time, said he'd come in to teach the musicians how to play hymns. So I told him, if you step to my musicians, you better know what you're doing. He said, you will see. So I want to say thank you for submitting your previous ordination papers. That's a level of respect and regard showing that you're submitted to the ministry in which you stand. So when I give you these, just know this, and then we'll go. There's a target on your back 24-7. After this, someone that said amen like they did, Jesus going to say kill you the next week. But know that you've got the whole armor of God. I don't hear nobody surrounding you. Well, here goes our seal, is several seals. You will be addressed from this day forward as Elder Charles Curry, unless you allow people to call you anything else, you're Elder Curry. That's the choir and all there to never say Charles, unless you allow that. You are Elder Eddings or Elder D. I'd rather you, because you're young, I'd rather you be Elder D. So we don't go through the deep stuff with Denitra Eddings. You will be Elder D as Pastor J as Pastor J. I am hoping, as I forestated and I don't back down, that as we work with you as a female preacher, that you will become one of those in that age bracket that can help us turn the ministry around. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, sons and daughters, mothers of the church, I am now submitting these ordination papers to these now that are known as Elder Charles Carey. He will take it and hold it, and this one here, Elder Donitra Eddings, they will approach me. I will lay hands on both of you, which is very rare. I've not laid hands on any of my bishops. I've not laid hands on any of my pastors. But you all in here belong to me. And I have to be who I have to be. Point your hands this way. Now, Father, we do thank you. Give me that oil. We do thank you for this kind man, this gentle giant, this seasoned man of God who have come through the ranks. You've brought him from Egypt to Canaan. 
He may not know his purpose, but God give him the power to fulfill it. As of this day, Lord, because of his submission, I ask you to open up your windows. Ha, ah, yeah. Pour him out a blessing. Let there be no room to receive. Let him feel like he just got a rabbit's foot in his pocket. Show him that it's not by might nor by power. Thank you for touching him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. In Jesus' name and God, my daughter, who I dearly love, who remained in the back scene and on the back side of the desert, worked through her problems and her pain in secret. I ask that you reward her openly. Em empower her. Equip her. Enhance her. Elevate her. Show her your glory. And God, whomever you may have for her, make him strong. Bold. Courageous. But most of all, loving. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. I would that both of you who have been pinned face and open up your ordination papers to your brothers and sisters. Let's receive Elder Charles Carey and Elder Donitra Eddings. You both may turn to the right are you taking more and be served communion and get some of that as well? Amen. Has everyone else taken communion? No? All right. Well, then I will exercise that authority. I will exercise that authority because you don't go from the prelate backwards. So I will exercise that authority. Everyone that has your sac sacraments, please get them. Open up your package and lift up that white cracker, which is the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this here was broken in remembrance for us. Within this is the healing power of God. When we take it, remember who died for us to take it. You are digesting a part of who he is to get rid of a part of who you were. Take, eat, this is my body. You have the blood. This has been transformed from one substance to another. Regardless of its taste, it doesn't matter. Its purpose is greater than its taste. This is the blood that was shed that all of us might be saved and have citizenship in eternal life with Jesus Christ. They pierced him in his side and out of his side came blood and water. He did this, and let me say this scripture, and as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Take drink, this is my blood. Just hang it on the, the plant, hang it on the plant, and just leave it there. Make sure the words are visible. You may be seated. If you're happy this morning, clap your hands and tell God thank you. I said if you're happy this morning, clap your hands and tell God thank you. I really love y'all because I had to cancel my flight and tickets to the Dallas game. I'm supposed to be in Pittsburgh. Assistant pastor didn't love y'all enough, so he took the tickets. 
and he's in Pittsburgh, and he's enjoying himself. Let's clap for our assistant pastor real quick. I appreciate him. You can bring this down just a little bit. I appreciate him. And uh, he needs to enjoy life. It's good to have our executive pastor in the person of Dr. Sonia Mixon. She's a powerful, purposeful woman. She just did a cancer type of awareness in Jacksonville. I don't hear nobody, Florida. That is one of her passions and should be when you survive stage four cancer and should have been in hospice, but late in the midnight hour, I don't hear nobody, God, God turned it around. And if you look at her, it's working in her favor. We want to thank God for our senior father this morning. The Bishop Michael Hope, come on, do better. And his lovely wife, Dr. Barbara. They are living testimonies. Y'all look good in y'all new things. Something look different about y'all. I want to, and don't play too much, I want to acknowledge some guests today. Most of the people in this church are our own. Can y'all clap for that? They're our own. In two weeks, or I may save it for Holy Convocation, there are two more ordinations I am saving to do. They were not here. Let me introduce them to you. One had already submitted that he would have to be in D.C. for a wedding that his wife was in, and that's the Etherwards family. Uh, they are watching. Can we clap for them? He was supposed to be standing here, but we're going to be licensing him and his wife and a man of God who's been ordained elder in the Church of God in Christ. Then he also became ordained through the College of Bishops, Bishop Jesse Delano Ellis, which makes him completely a beast, makes him a terrorist in the kingdom. Elder Murphy Stan will be consecrating Elder Murphy in the back. Lovely wife, Stan. I have their papers on my desk and I will be solidifying and laying hands on both of them. And I am proud to have them. He submitted all of his papers, but I'm gonna do something for you that I would only do for myself because your papers look exactly like mine. One from the college and one from the grand old church of God in Christ. We're gonna put those in frames and we're gonna let you keep that as a memory like I'm gonna do. And we're gonna move forward in Jesus name and somebody shout amen. My bishop, whether y'all clapping out, is the Bishop J. Drew Shear to presiding prelate of the church of God in Christ. Your bishop will be closing the holy convocation on November the 8th, Friday night at eight o'clock. I need your prayers, amen? Because this could either make me, break me or take me. And I've got more haters than friends, but I'm up for the task. Uh, Godmother, how did you hear about us? Okay, this person came because her godmother is Tannis, Tannis Stan. Her godmother must be Tannis. She's a guest of Isabella Fuller. Where is Isabella or Isabella Fuller? Yeah, my baby. And her name is Dianique Foy. Where's Dianique? Y'all clap for Dianique. Boy, these children love church. 
These people are guests of our lovely newly ordained deacons, Tracy Cleveland, and they're from Cleveland, Tennessee. And I want to announce them, Annalise, Jordan, and Christian Bradford. Where are you all? Will y'all stand? Please stand so we can love on y'all. Did I say all of the names right? Did I, which name did I mess up? Annalise? All right, sit down. Because I can tell I did something wrong because young people give that look. Let me start over. We, these are guests of Tracy Cleveland, newly appointed elder deacon from Cleveland, Tennessee. Annalise, did I say it right? Annalise, Jordan Bradford, and Christian Bradford. Let us rejoice for them. Last but not least, these are guests of the Lockett family, Stan Lockett family, so we can appreciate you. Their guests are from Hill City Church, Los Angeles, California. David and J Jamaica and Eden Anderson. Where are you? Let's clap. Hey! Now, y'all may not remember, but are these the folk who were in the car accident? No, okay. Well, let me ask you, because your name appears on my cash app for offering all the time. That's you? Yeah, you don't mind her giving the money because I give it back to you. you. You want me to give it back to you? Yeah, you all right with it? All right, because if you got any hustle, man, I'll cut you a check right now because that's... I just don't want her in trouble. She probably on the DL trying to get y'all a new house by sowing into the kingdom of God. I don't hear nobody, so I'm trying to help you. But this is, this is the daughter and son-in-law and grandson of James Lockett Stan and his lovely wife Juanita. This is their daughter. Come on, son-in-law and grand this say grandson but that don't look like no boy this huh yeah get on up and tell him get on up and tell him that you saw it yeah get on up yeah uh-huh amen that don't look like no grand boy to me that hair too long got pink on but that baby be dancing for Jesus Christ. Y'all should clap for a baby that does that kind of stuff. I want to show y'all something that no one knows I have. There was choir rehearsal this Thursday for convocation for today. And sometimes you don't know what people can do until they have to do it. And they have no idea. Play the tape. Can we clap for Corey McCree? I can't. You never know. This is how haters and people who don't like you use their phone without you knowing. And people hold these receipts to kill people, but those who do it will die themselves. They will. I speak that in Jesus' name. That all of you that like seeing people exposed, may God expose you. And because I'm close with God, watch what I tell you. I am my brother's keeper. I got all kind of mess in my family, but you ain't going to find out from me. I got all kind of baby pictures. I got all kind of receipts. But you ain't going to find out for me. Everyone has an appointment with a mistake. 
Will you tell someone what I just said? Everyone. And when yours come, you better hope somebody is a top sheet, fitted sheet, cover, quilt. You better hope somebody can cover you in the cold. Corey, I'm glad that wasn't a bad tape. Because I would not have played it. But I would have showed you. You're all right with me, boy. The whole band is bad. We've got the baddest Levitical gospel. Y'all in screaming band in all of the world. We've been pretty consistent. We ain't, we ain't, we ain't had to swap out nobody in a long time. We ain't had to find nobody. Well, a little bit, but God fixed it. But we ain't had to do too much of anything. And I appreciate it. I want you to listen to a tape behind me. Make sure it's clear to be heard. Just listen and then let me walk. And before I do, this now is, says caution. I was parked in a certain place on last evening and they threw an event there and this tape was everywhere. Normally when I see this tape, I think somebody died. Y'all ain't from New York then. Normally when you see all that yellow stuff, you be like, somebody died. And it kept saying, caution, 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 caution. And the Lord told me, he said, take it with you. Put it at the altar. He said, leave it there while you preach. He says, anyone that ever steps up on this ground again and know you ain't right, you're going to get it. And it's going to happen in 24 hours. We don't use this to hide. Or to have power over people. Now, y'all think I'm playing. Everything I speak happens quick. If people don't start repenting, because you're not perfect. All of us have a date with a mistake. Amen. Amen. Listen to this and tell me what you think and then I'll be right back. Let it play. How we treat the church versus how we treat our work. Number one, we don't mind being late for church, but we try our best not to be late for work. Number two, we miss church because we say we are tired from work, but we never miss work for church. Number three, we spend two hours a week in church and complain that it's too long and go to work for eight hours a day for five or six days a week. Number four, when we are confronted with our mistakes in church, we quickly transfer to another church. When we are confronted of our mistakes at work, we apologize and promise to do better next time. Number five, when we are called to be at church other than on a Sunday, we make excuses that we are busy. When we are called to work on a Sunday, we miss church and give the excuse that we have to work. Number six, we miss church because we are not feeling well, but go to work even if we are not feeling well. Number seven, we want our Christmas party in church to be for free, but we pay for Christmas parties at work. Number eight, we check our phones during the church service, but we turn off our phones during meetings at the office. Number nine, we shy away from responsibilities in church, but we work hard at the office to be promoted. Number 10, we complain that the sermon in church is too long, but we can work for four hours over time at the office. Number 11, many times, the boss at the office receives more respect and honor than the pastor of the church. Number 12, we give the church excuses and give our work results. Missionary, you say, we get our living from our work. That's true, but you get your life from God. But missionary, I need to feed my family. Of course, but man shall not live on bread alone. Missionary, I am preparing for my retirement. Yes, you're right, but God is preparing you for eternity. Missionary, my boss is good to me. Maybe, but Jesus died to save you from hell. Christian, 
Maybe you need to reevaluate your relationship with God and make some major adjustments in your life as a disciple of Christ. May we grow in the Lord and His church. God bless. To God be the glory. How we... I appreciate you that are applauding and standing because it's needed. Needs to be heard by somebody more than myself. You never make an excuse for what you do miss in church when it's God who protects you while you do what you do. Especially if what you're doing does not include him. His mercy endureth forever. Let us pull up our declaration. Those who don't mind standing can guess you don't have to unless you choose. We're going to say this because I believe within this statement, within this proclamation is the cure for this ministry. You have to allow faith to have its place. Amen. Amen. And brothers, I want to hear y'all read this louder than women because I'm tired of the bass being so low. I'm from New York. We do bass music. Like real hardcore music. Let's read. Remember the relationship between a pastor and the congregation is a partnership with mutual respect and support being essential for the health of the church. Let it digest. We'll read it one more time. Amen. Woosa. Let's read. Remember the relationship between a pastor and the congregation is a partnership with mutual respect and support being essential for the health of the church. Can you clap for your neighbors, for your leaders, and can the leaders clap for each other and the members? Can we just clap for one another? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get out of here in time to catch a private jet to Pittsburgh. You all are not going to believe this. Yeah, we going, but I got to find this sermon. No, no, I believe in spiritual warfare. I believe that the devil's highly upset. So give this a chance to load. I can't get in my Bible and I can't get into my notes. I can hear somebody, I don't know who you are, you said shut it down and restart it. I don't know who said it, but I heard you, you're in the back. Oh, well, he running. All right, so I'm gonna shut it down, bring it back. Y'all clap for my man. Play me a quick song, let's, let's. What is that? Bless that wonderful name of the book of John, chapter two. The book of John. Y'all sang my computer back up. Bless that wonderful name of the Lord. Oh, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name. Come on. There's power in the name of
The book of John, be seated. Chapter number two. The book of John. Chapter number two. And then if we get a chance, I want to dialogue with you from the book of 2 Kings. Chapter 20. Verses 1 through 7. John chapter 2. Verses 1 through 11. You've heard this text before, but hopefully you will hear something from it you've never heard. Then 2 Kings chapter 20, verses 1 through 7. <clears throat> For you that still take notes and things, it's healthy that you do so. Here beginneth the reading of God's word and may sanctified in our hearts throughout the week. And on the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there. Both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto them, they have no wine. Look at somebody next to them. What have you run out of? Y'all got to stay with me now. His mother saith unto the servants, whatever he saith unto you, do it. And there was set there six water pots of stone after the man of the purifying of the Jews containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus saith unto them, fill the water pots with water. Look somebody and tell them the empty places are about to be filled. And not just filled, the rest of the text said filled to the brim. I told you September was a September to remember October is the month of fulfillment. November is the month of enjoyment. Look somebody and tell them I'm looking forward to all of this. They filled them up to the brim. Verse 8. He said unto them, draw out now. And they bear it to the governor of the feast. And they bear it. And the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine. And knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew. The governor of the feast called the bridegroom, saith unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. Tell your neighbor he's still saving the best for last. I do want to say this because you might be sitting near someone who doesn't like talking to strangers or people at all. So, you, so please don't get offended if you don't get a partner to correlate with. But let me say this for three folk who were drunk. When you are drunk off of good, you don't know what's bad. And some of you are in a season where you can't tell the difference from what's good for you. And what's bad for you because you're still intoxicated. Am I helping someone? I see two or three men that ain't been in church in so long since last Easter. They look nervous. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cain of Galilee. He manifested forth his glory. Y'all ain't going to believe this. And his disciples believed on him. Let me talk to some newly elders and deacons because the church won't talk. All of this miracle working that was done at the wedding was because he was with a group of unbelieving followers. I just found out God's given our church miracles because of the unbelievers that are present. How are y'all with Jesus, seeing him do what he do, and need to see? And this miracle is not even something spectacular. It's, 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 a, it's a wine. What makes this wine transformation a miracle for my three educated screamers? Let me give you the topic first, because we've had... The miracle in the mud. I wish I had members who go to church. 
we had the miracle in the mess. Then we had the miracle in the meal. Today is the miracle in the drink. Will you tell somebody and tell them there's a miracle in the drink? When you drink certain things, it alters your behavior. Look at some of y'all. I'm glad he's saying it's okay to drink. I didn't say that. See, we've got two or three in the middle that's looking funny. So now you're going to say, because Jesus made wine, it's all right to drink wine. Now, now, now if you want to come preach it, proceed with caution. Because what I want to tell two people who will jump because you like scripture is this was wine, but it was not from here. Oh, you can't judge until you trace the source. Come on, elders, preach. Even the governor that sanctions the taxes and who can get licenses said, I don't know where this is from. But what makes this a real valid miracle, then I want to teach you a little while for three members who will be wealthy, is water cannot ferment. Some of you ain't deep. Some of you are going to watch things change that ain't supposed to change. Nothing welcomes change more than a wet baby. When grown-ups make a mess, they'll sit there and act like it won them till they get home. But when a child's diaper's soiled, they'll cry and want to be picked up. But some of y'all are too proud to cry and stretch your hand out for help. So you're sitting in church today with a soiled diaper acting like it ain't you. help at certain junctions and points in life but help is not volunteered all the time you got to learn to swallow your pride and open your mouth whether you get the help or not sometimes you have to make known I need to change it's funny that when a father, most fathers hold their newborn who they love and claim looks like them, that when that child does its first real mess in the diaper, they give this boy to his mama. Why do you pass your mess over to other people instead of changing it yourself? Some of y'all look hardcore. Some of y'all look like you came from out of jail. Homie, I done did it all. Don't let this red dress fool you. It is so important that we learn quickly, because some of us took too long to learn how to ask for help. If I can help somebody as I travel along, I ain't got no old saints. If I can... Cheer someone with a word or song. Y'all don't know the lyrics, you young people. If I could show someone that they've been journeying wrong, then my living shall not be in vain. You can leave water for a whole year and it will still be water. Leave anything else uncovered it will take on a smell. It will start changing because of the climate. Yo. Some of the things will become so fermented that you can use it for liquor. Now, it bothers me, Deacon Jackson, Elder Jackson, it bothers me that I can't get five of my members to not sit here and act like you have never drank before. Some of you had a drink this morning. Some of you mad because the communion ain't real wine.
trying to get your hit every first Sunday. But let us remember what God is using to create what they want is a substance that's not supposed to change. Now you'll know whether you're sitting near the right person. Tell them, I've been in things that I was not supposed to get out of. But God changed it on my behalf. While you're trying to figure it out. Watch it, Dr. Deborah. While you're trying to figure this out, the Lord has already worked it out. And when I am weak, then is he strong. I'm not preaching this, but it is one of the topics that I've used in the past. Just look at someone that looks friendly and tell them drinks are on the house. I want you to go to 2 Kings chapter 20. This particular sermon, I'm only reading this to pull out one thing to strengthen the original text. So they really don't marinate, but I need an ingredient and something substantial out of another passage to strengthen the original passage because I don't want to make John, the original script only, and make you think that your solution is a drink. I can I got to find a better solution. I see the middle section that's a little um, judgmental. And so let me tell something. And you that are judgmental, barely read the Bible, barely go to church, and all of that. But let me say to my young adults who I'm trying to raise up and to a few of you who are honest with yourselves, as saved as I am, and I know I'm going to heaven, I've had a drink before. Now, if you would like to exit the building, you may. I have confessed this 15 years ago when my marriage was dissipated and my former wife, my ex-wife said something to me that crippled my soul. And it, drew, and it drew me to do a few things. But I told it in a college setting that's on a tape that's being sold across America called Confessions and Transparency. I did this video 20 years ago and sold over 50,000 copies. People wanted honesty. People are tired of you judging them for something you've done yourself. But I ain't no pastor. I don't give a Hades what you are. If you are saved, the rules are the same for all. Ain't no special hell for preachers that fall and a light fire for Christians who follow. The temperature is the same for everybody. So when you have mercy on others, God said you'll obtain mercy for yourself. Let me read. Blessed are the merciful. Why y'all ain't talking? For they shall obtain because you're going to need it. Mercy. New Jack City said, am I my, my brother's keeper? Yes. I, but he blew his brains out. That's not no brother's keeper. CMB. CMB. We all we got. You got to watch folk who tell you they have your back, and they do. With a couple of knives in their hand while they have your back. If I were to ever get married again and go on a cruise or to a tropical island, 
this, hey, this, this my vision. And go on my honeymoon. I will not be taking Kirk Franklin. I will not be taking Mary, Mary. I love them all. They know me. I will not be taking Donnie McClurkin ain't going at all. I will not. And I won't be taking Diet Coke every day. I just, I don't think that's how it's going to play out. I might have to slip something in her sanctified drink. Be like, what's wrong with me? You in good hands with all state. But this text in John, we're going to Kings, could be really mishandled. Talk to me, five of you. When I say mishandled, let me tell you what I'm talking about. Jesus was invited to a booze drinking wedding. I'm saying this for talkers. He accepted the invitation, but he did not indulge. Let me say it again for the slow folk on the red bus. He went where you would have avoided. Because he knew he had power not to do what they was doing. And sometimes some of you are judged for being somewhere that others say you ain't supposed to be. But being there by invitation and indulging is two different stories. I see about four people judging me now. I got to talk to him about this. You can talk to me. You ain't even got to talk about me. I'm going to be right in the office, right at the church. Some people kill me when they say I'm saving. I don't do that anymore. That's because you didn't do it right when you did it. I don't care about no sex. You had a bad deal. See, something wrong with you because... I got a man sweating. Is the pastor talking like this? How are we supposed to talk in the hood? When people have bad experiences in areas that could be good, they condemn that area because of their experience. But what was bad for you might not be bad for others. Y'all not talking to me now. A man hurt you and now you flip into women. That's your choice. But that's a big hurt. A woman can hurt me and then hurt me and hurt me again. And I'm going to be looking for the next woman. Now that's me. I'm going to function as I'm programmed to function. get so hurt that you start dysfunctioning. I don't believe in marriage. Once it's over, I'll never get married again. Then if you save, you got to try to stop having sex too. So what you just admitted is you ain't going to never commit, but you're going to always submit somewhere. Now that's what you just said about yourself. That you've been hurt so bad by man that you're going to keep insulting God. I need my young adults to talk to me because this side ain't saying nothing now. We all, I'm going to Kings, and then I'll need about 25 more minutes. We all, in one point in time in our life, will get sick of something or someone. Touch somebody and tell them, now I know he ain't lying. He is not lying. And you that scream real loud, it's the choice you made. Whoever got close enough to hurt you, you let them in there. And some of you didn't get hurt because they trespassed or betrayed you. You got hurt because they found out who you are.
can I get a little honesty as I try to teach? All of us have a side about ourselves that we're not pleased with. If I know you are that person, jump up and sit down. All of us have a, all of us have a side of us. And now you're feeding that beast more than your Christianity. Because you're letting the ugly side defend you from something that your God side has equipped you to live through. Now I just preach. My God side has equipped me to live through things that my ugly side is telling me not to live with at all. I'm talking to folks standing talking. If God be for us. See, it's if on you, but I know he's for me. Touch somebody and tell them, I know God is with me. Well, if God is with you, he said, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Let me do the payment. Because if you do it and it's wrong, I got to do you too. It's better to let God fix trouble in my way. I got to cry sometimes. I wish I had my old saying, so much trouble. I have to cry sometimes. I lay awake at night. God knows I do. But that's all right. Because I know Jesus will fix it. After wine, the wine and say it better. Ain't no need to worry. What the night is going to bring. Prophesy to yourself. It will be all over in the morning. Hezekiah is sick in this text. And if you read from verse 1 for two folk will push me, in those days he was sick unto death. I want the left side to support me today. This side right here, look up. I want y'all to talk to me. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said, Thus saith the Lord, set thine house in order. For you're about to die and no longer live. If I say this and I waste it, I feel bad because I feel like I should have preached it on at, a, at another church. But if two of my members catch this, I won't feel bad. And that is, he, he, he heard that word, but he changed his posture. And I'm about to tell some of you something that you ain't going to believe because I need me a talk church. Hezekiah never asked God to let him live. For all of you that said that, you lied. You can read it in every version of the Holy Writ. This story is in Isaiah and in Kings. Let's finish reading it. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, not spare me. Remember. Remember, for my preachers who are not talking, means God has to look backwards. So he's saying, maybe it's something I did presently that got me in this mess, but can you find something I did? Oh, y'all, back somewhere. I don't care how far you got to go back. He's asking God, do you have any fond memories of me? Any. And if you have one, press pause. God is not pushing pause where you made the mistake. He's letting that part play through, but you may need to tell God, rewind. And fine when I forgave somebody. Fine when I treated somebody nice. Fine when I paid someone's light bill. Fine when I could have killed somebody, but I didn't. Lord, I need you to find a moment in my life where you were pleased with me and press pause. 
Most of you have that memory, and if I bring you to it and you don't jump, I'm going to be mad. But if you jump, we'll let the tape roll on. That was when you did something that shocked you. I can't believe I didn't do this. Boy, the old me, would, if you said anything like this, the old me. See, some of you can't say old me because the old you is the same you. But I've gone through some things and handled it in a way that made me question myself. And God said, that's the moment I'm going to go back to and press pause. I think I need to put something deeper out there, being that I see faces going through some contorting and you look a little disconnected, might as well make it a little more crucial for you. And let me say this for three folk who be honest and jump up and be honest with yourself. Some of you, to be honest, you didn't really learn the sin till after you got saved. It's the truth. Because if you grew up with my grandparents, you didn't do nothing while you were a sinner. You were too scared. Bus gonna roll over you. They prayed and told you you better not go outside. We respected the oil of our ancestors. But now, even with power, there's a generation that is not afraid. No honor. No fear. It's making the world a terrible place to live in. Most of them kind of people stay home like it's a nap and hang out in the street like it's their home. Because when you're home by yourself, God gets to talk with you. Oh, y'all, and he, oh, y'all, and when you ain't got no company and no extra voices, he gets to speak to you. And if any of you love him, you hear him talk back because you tell him, I got to do better than this. What was I thinking about? You even once a week say, how did I get myself into this? There's a time when nothing means anything except the voice of God. Touch the mind, tell him I'm almost at that point in my life right now. Remember me how I walk before thee in truth and in a perfect heart, and I've done that which is good in your sight. Then Hezekiah wept sore. His issue continued. He did not ask to be healed. He asked to be remembered. Let me teach to those who are hungry. Came to pass afore Isaiah was going out into the middle court that the word of the Lord came to him saying, turn again. Tell Hezekiah, the captain of the people, thus saith the Lord thy God of David thy father, I've heard your prayer. Y'all have, I've seen thy tears. I'm about to heal you. Let me talk to praises. And this word changed before he got off the premises. I want to speak to praises before you get off this property. Some things that were not supposed to change. Is about to change. Let's keep our focus. They're not supposed to change. Water does not ferment. Go ahead and be happy in the back. Came to pass before he gets out of the middle court. Told Isaiah, turn, tell Hezekiah to come the people. Thus saith the Lord thy God, thy father David. I've heard thy prayer. I've seen thy tears. Behold, he's not adding time yet. He said, I'm going to heal you. 
Y'all going to miss this. And the healing was not where he was praying. He had to make it to the house of the Lord. Uh, he had to make it to the house. On the third day, thou shalt go up unto the house. Everyone that made it here this morning. I'm on to preach. Regardless of what's making you sick. Or what you have run out of. God's about to fix it. We're almost there. Tell your neighbor I've been so hurt in this season. That I ran out of things. And I ran from some things. But tell them God's about to fix this thing quick, fast. I want to say something. Because I'm trying to preach this. You work in the prison system. In the system... When you do something in general population that is not acceptable, they put you in solitary confinement. You are calling it a hole and I'm with you, but they put them nicely in solitary confinement. Let me say this to five folk with a mouth. Even when you play cards alone, it's solitaire. Root word, Tiffany, for solitude. Now, Dr. Mixon, stay with me because you got to preach. You up next now. Understand me clearly that when they put you in solitary confinement, the slew or the hole, this is a punishment. And when some of you are so hurt that you stay to yourself, you have put yourself in solitary confinement. Playing with yourself. Because you don't know how to act in general population. Gen pop scares you. You want to share a cell to yourself so you fight who's in the cell so that you can be escorted. Oh, y'all. Because you don't know how to influence who's in that cell with you. Some of you that have influence should never want to be by yourself or with people you get along with. Influence is not for folk you get along with. It's to teach folk how to get along with you. Influence is a power that makes people that don't like you turn and work for you. You don't have influence. You've got attention. Now, if you go to school, college, or you are self-read well, you understand right now you've put your soul in solitary confinement. He said, now your healing is in the house of the Lord. I will add unto thy days 15 years. When? After you get to the house of the Lord. See, y'all ain't preached it right. I'm going to reverse the death sentence. When? After you get to the house of the Lord. Now, when I finish this and you don't scream, I shall walk out. The house of the Lord is general population where everybody gets on your nerve. But God said, you've got to let them know I'm with you, not them. And when... And when Joseph goes to jail, it said the Lord was with him. We don't know who's with you until we see what you're in. How you act when you run out of something. Touch them and tell them this is my word for the month. I feel it. This is my word. 
And I will deliver thee and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. Now I'm about to read one more verse on this note. Then I'll braid the hair. I need 15 of you to jump like you're ecstatic because your change may have happened already. Because I already told you it had happened before you leave the place. So I did tell you. Whether you believe me or not does not matter to me. But here is where I want you to hear me. Don't stand. I want you to hear me. Be comfortable. After God tells Isaiah to tell Hezekiah, I'm going to heal you and give you 15 days. He didn't just get a miracle. This is what happens next. And I need 15 young people to talk. God did not use nothing this time for the miracle. He told Isaiah, take up a lump of figs and put it where the problem is. See, some of you don't want a prescription. You want to do it your way. But the Lord told me he was healed, but then the Lord said, not just by my word, you've got to now get a prescription. Y'all didn't read it. It ain't on the screen. Y'all ain't got no words on them screen. Because y'all looking like you ain't reading the same Bible. Them screens working. Take a lump of figs. And lay it on the boil. And he recovered. God didn't get in him. He got in something that he put on him. Now, some of y'all deep, but I know you ain't never preached that part. You just said he was healed. You didn't give them the prescription. Because he was not just healed because he heard God. He heard God, then he had to apply the instructions of God. And what this says in 21st century vernacular... For ten folk who scream and be healed right away is be careful who you let near the pain. You gotta be careful. You still sit because you keep talking about the illness instead of the God that told you live. Yeah, you hurt me, but you can't hinder me. You hurt me. But I ain't talking about you. I'm too busy doing what they do with prescriptions. Take until finish. Even if you feel better and the symptoms have subsided, keep taking it until it's finished. Some of you are sick because you try to change friends to feel better. Feeling better is not doing better. You don't know you heal till you stay where you hurt. You ain't delivered from nobody if you can't face them. Sit with them. Talk with them. You're in solitary confinement even with your new company. All of y'all serving time. Let me say this with 10 minutes left. I may not hoop here today. I'm trying to catch this private jet. But let me say something. Hezekiah gets healed before the word that he received gets out off the premises. Whatever I preach or teach to you today, don't let it get off this property. When you head to your car, about face, turn and do a Hezekiah and let the devil know I'm turning my back on you. And get you some figs. Y'all don't want me to preach. Because certain figs and grapes is how you make wine. Y'all, I want you. And what does wine do? What does wine do? It applies to the womb. And it takes the infection. Oh, y'all. It's an antiseptic. 
You don't have to drink it. You apply it. Folks looking at me like, that's good. I knew it was going to be good when I studied it. That's not arrogancy. That's called studying. And you going to steal it for one of yours. Alcohol is like a stringent. It is antiseptic. It disinfects the possibility of what could happen to the wound that was unattended. Oh, y'all are quiet now. And some of you don't understand. You still don't understand. When you rewind because y'all going too far, the Bible lets us know that the greatest, strongest prescription he gave the man was the Holy Ghost. Now, if I say this and preachers don't jump and remember something wrong with how long you've been preaching compared to your response. But the Bible says when they were filled, the people outside said, you act drunk. And he said, we are not drunk as ye. He didn't say we weren't drunk at all. Could it be the real spiritual rendition of this is not from here? Could it be for streamers that they got a taste of what they were going to get a whole whiff of? Yep, some of y'all still ain't talking, but that's fine. Now, Prophet Hall, we with you, but, uh, you know, we hear you say some off-the-wall stuff, and I do. And y'all uh, can't take it all, but, I mean, you, you know, because certain people's uh, reading of the scriptures are limited. And their friends who they talk to don't have knowledge of the scripture. Therefore, you're always the smartest person in the room. But here is where you get some common sense. I thought the first time the Holy Ghost came was in the upper room. It was not. That's not true. See, I just heard somebody to my left and in front of me. Because in John, the Bible said God called his disciples and breathed on them. And said, receive ye. But when he sent them to the room, he said, go wait to be endowed with power. Oh, maybe you didn't know. And it said, John, thy son, was born with the Holy Ghost. And then his mama received the Holy Ghost. Then his daddy got blessed by... Listen, y'all. Some of y'all just so religious, you don't know the Bible. See, some of you mad that we didn't get it the way you did. See, back in the day, you had to roll on the floor. No, no, that's how I got saved. But I ain't pushing that on my kids. But that's how I got saved. We had to tarry. See, can't get no help. They spit in your face and everything. Breath smelling, call Jesus. We had to put up with that assassination. Underarm smelling. We trying to call Jesus. But I will say this for those who will scream. The way y'all get saved now is as weak as water. It has no change. Salvation means to change. Y'all getting saved and ain't changing at all because your water has not changed yet. Yes, 15 years. I'm about to close this with two paragraphs in one line. The hidden message in the secret that's embedded in the sermon today that I never shared with anyone before until now. I need a little time to build the text so that it would be considered. Because if I don't, it would be considered boring. But if I break it down, it, 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 it could be a blessing. Miracles are wrought by God for people who run out of things. 
that no one can replace but God himself. Talk to me quick. I'm flying. Running out of is what is necessary for you to get a miracle. And when you run out of what is necessary, I'm going to see who catches it, it can cause you to panic. And come to a place where you are an emotional wreck. And now you're living saved with anxiety, saved with panic attacks, saved with depression, saved with suicidal thoughts. Can I have all of these things and still be saved? And what's causing these panic attacks and these anxieties and depressions and acid reflux and thoughts of suicide for 10 folk who would scream is ain't nothing changing. And I'm having to sit back and watch the liars and hypocrites get what I feel I should have. I'm not jealous that they have it. But if they ain't living right, how are things going so well? And at least I'm trying to live better and things are not changing at all. Touch somebody and tell them your turn is coming today, today. Call that person Hezekiah. Say, hey, Hezekiah. These emotions, they surface when someone's back is against the wall. And they and those that are around them can do nothing about their situation. From that, I adopted a term that I created, and I want to explain it for two focal screen, spiritual hospice. I want to talk about, you know, like solitary confinement. I want to talk about spiritual hospice. If I don't get my preachers to talk louder, hospice is a type of health care that provides care for people with life-limiting illnesses. Which means you dying, but we want you to feel comfortable while dying. Now, I thought my mother of the church would push me, but one day they're going to learn whenever your pastor talking, the mother's supposed to say amen. You should have learned that from your mama. It focuses on improving the quality of life rather than extending it. So what Hezekiah was asking for was hospice. Remember me, let me leave comfortable. He was not expecting an extension. But look at somebody and tell them, you ain't going to stand by me and go out like that. Tell them you're going to finish living your life like you should. Talk to them. Tell him, I know you don't want me to talk to you. You probably don't like me, but I've sat by here to tell you. Get out of that hospice. Hospice care is typically provided in your home. But it can also be offered in a hospice facility or a hospital. Hold on. What does a hospice provide so that you can die comfortably? Pain management. Come on, make me preach. Emotional support. Make me preach. Spiritual care. Respite care. What is respite care? Hospice may provide respite care for caregivers, allowing them to take a break for them caring for you. The goal of hospice care is to help patients live their remaining days as comfortably and as fully as possible. It is often considered compassionate and a supportive approach to the end of life's care. What the heck 
in spiritual hospice. You praying for me, Janice? What? You gave us what the medical term is and what the care exists, but Bishop, you come up with some terms and, you know, just want you to make it plain. This is what I'm going to say, and to those who jump, I know you follow me. Spiritual hospice to me is when people utilize the church to feel comfortable in their situation until they expire. You ain't in church to live. You in church because you know you're dying and may not be able to make it. This, y'all using church like a hospice. Well, I'll go today. I ain't going. I'll go. What? what? Whereas Hezekiah, God told him, use the church as an extension to life. Oh, yeah. That every time you walk into the house of God, you enter his gates with thanksgiving. You enter his courts with praise. Come on, talk to me, Shabbat. Be thankful unto him. And bless his name for the Lord is good. Mercy is ever. Stop coming here like you really hate church. You don't hate church. You hate your church mates. Healing is not in your company. It's in his house. And I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I wish I had. I asked this side to talk. I will enter his courts with praise and be thankful unto him and bless his name because the Lord is good. Mercy is everlasting. And it's true. Let me talk. David had so many. Now, Elder Curry, one day you ought to preach this. So remember I said it, play it back, or Charles Jr., write it down for your daddy. This would be something good for you to preach as a newly appointed elder here or anywhere you go, licensed with permission. Catch this. There was a time when David said, my enemies overtake me. I can't stand them. Not even them that are of my friends. I'm betrayed by my own household. He goes off. He goes off. David the praiser. David the king. David God's man after his own heart. He done. He's telling God, I'm ready to walk away from all of this. And then he writes, y'all are going to miss it, that my feet had well nigh slipped when I was entering the sanctuary. Which means if the devil could have made me fall before I entered. I would have never entered again. But when he walked in, even though his enemies was there, he found out God allowed him to triumph over his enemies. Then he wrote this verse for screamers. I was glad. When they said, you got to go from mad to glad. You got to go from sad to glad. I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to get my life extended. Need my children's life extended. My marriage extended. Where it all should have ended, I need God to make it extend. How do you spell extended? It's just E-X-T, then it's ended. That's how you spell it. E-X-T slash ended. That's how you spell extended. There is no extended without ended. EXT is missing the word because it's a little Latin, which is the letter I, which is a powerful word that gives a word meaning to be pronounced. If I do this and 10 of you jump, and I mean jump for real, you, you be blessed. Extended means to exit ended, right? So instead of me walking away from it, I'm going to walk through it because it's an extension. It's to extend. 
Every time you don't exit right, you start over. Different place, different space, different group, the same issue. Because you got to graduate. About to close, Tannis. Thank you for praying for me. So that so-called liquor in John 2 is only liquor if you drink it. It is medicine if you apply it. Uh -uh. It's what you do with what God gives you. Because if you do wrong, it'll do you. You follow? If I drink it, it controls me. If I apply it, I'm still in control. Take those lumps of figs. Apply it to the womb that's only visible because of the boil. You have Hezekiah bleeding ulcers. Uh, I feel church. You have worried yourself to death. Your ulcers have burst and now you have an opening incision or something visible about to break out from the inside to the outside. We see where it is because something's protruding. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, I wish I had my church. But put this application and hold it there. Y'all gonna miss it. And make sure you go to church with it. Oh, yeah. And in 72 hours, uh -uh. I'm going to help you recover. What you've been going through for years will be over in days. Yelling. Touch somebody and tell them what I've been going through for years. Will be over in just a couple of days. Tell somebody else that. What I've been going through for years. I'll be over it in a few days. Y'all remember somebody else got up in 72 hours. Oh, you act like you're on some call them wonderful. Some call them counselor. Some call them mighty God. Some call them everlasting father. But I want to call them a way maker. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. Just grab somebody and tell them, my God, that is who you are. Bridge over troubled water. Doctor in the sick room. Lawyer in the courtroom. Bread when you were hungry, water when you were thirsty, friend to the friendless, hope for the hopeless, mother for the motherless, father for the fatherless, job to the jobless, yeah, that's who my God is. Touch somebody and say, neighbor, if you drink what the bishop serving and apply it where you need it, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Y'all better preach to that neighbor. Tell them, God's not dead. He's still alive. I can feel him in my hands. I can feel him in my feet. 
I can feel him all over me. Touch somebody and say, are you the cure to what's trying to kill me? Because tell him, all I need is a word from the Lord. Is God a healer? You ought to say yes. Is God a deliverer? I feel like preaching like my daddy. You ought to say yes. Is God all power? You ought to say yes. Just grab somebody's hand today and say neighbor. You're the drink that I'm looking for. Tell him I ain't trying to swallow you. I'm not trying to be you. I'm just trying to get healed. And all I need is for you to look in my direction and say these three phrases. Be healed. Be set free. And be delivered. If the person you spoke to did not get excited, or if you didn't get excited when you said it, grab another neighbor's hand and say, oh, neighbor, a neighbor, be healed, be set free, and be delivered by the power of the Holy Ghost. Tell your neighbor, by the time you get home, that water, that wound is going to change. You will be set free. You will be delivered. The devil is a liar. Yeah, 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 yeah. The devil is a liar. <laughs> the devil is a liar. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, where does it hurt? Tell them if it's not physical, you can still locate it. If your heart's been broken, lay your hands on your heart. If your mind is disturbed, lay your hands on your head. If you got somewhere to go, anoint your feet. If you got something you need, anoint your hands. And let the devil know, I changed my mind. I decided not to die. But I'm pressing on. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining. now and pull them close to you and say neighbor you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me and oh neighbor ah, neighbor I get joy when I think about what the Lord has done for me ask the neighbor what has he done what has he done? Tell him I'm glad you asked. I'll tell you what he did. He picked me up. Yeah. He 
assignment. Get somebody in general population and say, neighbor, maybe you don't have the power to speak for yourself because your situation is too overwhelming. But give me the opportunity to speak to your situation without laying hands on you. Just by speaking the word. Here's what I say for you. I command those Satan in the name of the Lord to take up your weapon and flee. For God has given us authority to walk all over there. Get out of here. The Lord rebuke you. The blood of Jesus. Loose my brother. Loose my sister. Loose my mother. Get up on out of here. Loose the people of God and go higher. Go higher. Go higher. Go higher. Oh, 
know what? I'm not forcing no one to dance. I'm not putting you in heaven or hell. But any of you that are serious about you need God to extend your life and not live it like you're in a hospice. If you want God to give you better days ahead, you've got 30 seconds to praise him any way you feel, but it better be real. One, two, three. have a mouth do you have a mouth children of God sons of God daughters of God do you have a mouth we're about to go home Hallelujah. F sharp. D flat, C sharp. Just hold someone's hand if they're available. Telling you being made whole right now. Something happened and now I know he touched me. <laughs> and he made, made he's a way maker. 
promise keep light in the dark. gotta say it if you can sing or not Way maker. Way Before you get home, those empty spaces, those unhealthy emotions, where the bitterness resides, God's going to give you an antiseptic. Gonna give you a stringent something to help disinfect that area so that the wound does not become dangerous. How great thou art. How great thou art. got one more song left and I want y'all to help me. Something about the name Jesus. Something about the name Jesus. It is the sweetest name I know. Oh, oh how What is it? It is the sweetest name. 
what is it? of you do good in your tarumas, but I don't know why today I'm challenging leaders and those who are in business to sow a hundred dollars or more into the kingdom. I have a business meeting after this that's somewhat huge. I don't think that I'm the person for the deal, but if God gives me a name of anyone in here, you may get a call from me because this deal is sweet. But you got to learn that every door is not for you. It's a door for you to walk through to bring somebody else to the table. I'm going to give $250 this morning. And that's not any money for some of us. Especially with the deal that's afforded me that I know is not for me. I'm going to ask people to give their best to try to give over 100, especially those who are leaders, those who are entrepreneurs, those who are philanthropic. You're always into the business of making things happen for other people. Make it happen for the ministry. I'm going to ask at least 40 people to do 100 or more. Once you have it, come sow it. If you're giving Keep playing. Our executive pastor will come and give the final words. Next Sunday, let's pack this place. Now, let me tell y'all something softer because I want them to hear me. I did not put my schedule up, but let me give it to you so you can pray for me. I leave on tomorrow going to Maryland to preach for, to preach for Dr. Michael Freeman. I'll be there on Tuesday. On Wednesday, as tired as I am, unless there is a hurricane that's supposedly coming through here. Y'all didn't hear about it? Hold that, hold that music. What is it, what is it called? Yeah, him. Milton, we just got rid of, her. yeah, and now here come her husband, Milton. But if the flight allows, look at me, I'm not playing. I've already paid for it. I'm coming back home to be with you on Wednesday to teach Bible study. Then on Thursday morning, I fly out early to go preach for Dr. Shirley Caesar's birthday, 86th birthday. I'll be preaching on Thursday. Then on Friday, I'm in Augusta, Georgia for our Shabbat Regional Church a Paul Coppock closing their convocation on Friday. That's a lot in one week. So what am I telling you for? Your prayers. Thank you, Tennis. I said, what am I telling you for? I'm gonna ask you again. Why am I telling you my schedule? Every time we go up in a plane is dangerous. And I thank God I've been on planes that's been on fire, planes that have almost fallen in the water, planes who have lost their engine in over my 40 years. And yet the Lord says go. So it's not easy to do what we do. I think Sister Three, we call her Three, I think she's turning 56 years old. My first member under my pastoring was Rosa. 
She just had a birthday herself, Rose. Happy belated birthday. I believe there's somebody else. There's someone else, let me have my book. No, don't say Bruce, he done got his already. Yeah, we say Rose, then we say Bruce, nah. Mm -mm. Oh, I am. It's pre, okay, I don't think I know this person personally, but hopefully I will meet them. It's pre, it's, it's Pradesha, Pradesha Miller. Where are you? Pradesha Miller. Her birthday's October the 7th. Amen. Y'all, oh, she was a young lady who was up here worshiping. Okay, so we thank y'all. I've not overlooked it. I don't know how God speaks to me and, and my mind goes back to it. But let's have a pleasant day today. I said it'll be changed by the time we get where we live. Can we have a pleasant rest of the day? That's not, can we have a pleasant, hey women, why don't y'all do something? Treat us out to eat even though it ain't Father's Day. Can y'all stop waiting until June? Take us out today. Now you've been in church a while, but I'll be watching that game for, four, for, for about four hours with no excuse. I want y'all to pray for the Cowboys. I don't care what y'all say. You're only praying for either the Cowboys or the Steelers today. Your prayer got to go one way or the other. Your team is not playing. Stop being selfish. And pray for our assistant pastor who's right now laughing, having a ball in Pittsburgh, we can't stand you. Pray for my other buddy, Mays. He's in DC having fun, we can't stand you. But he will be with me Monday and Tuesday in Maryland and we'll go forth. I need your prayers because I'm getting a little older and the time I used to travel, it gets a little hard now. So we'll be gone Monday, Tuesday, here Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, so on. If I'm too tired, if y'all will clap and honor your leader, if I'm too tired, can we let Dr. Mixon preach on Sunday? Y'all almost make me feel like y'all don't want me, but uh, you're fired. It's like Donald Trump messing with, but her word is strong, her study is passionate. If you enjoyed the service, hug at least three people and tell them I'm so glad to be next to you. And the next voice is Dr. Mixon. Amen, amen. As it show some love, please don't walk out of the door. Hold on, must have forgot one more thing we need to clap. Uh, Overseer Sharon Davis, your birthday. Oh, Sharon Brown. Where is Sharon? Hey, I hear you're going to be a year younger on tomorrow. Let us celebrate her in Jesus' name.